is Daf, is Daf Mem Hey, and we'll begin with Bechol Yom Makriv, and we explain that there's a difference between the Torahs every day of the year and the Torahs of Yom Kippurim, and that's with regard to what we call the Dakus of the Torahs, which means we have to crush the some amount of the Torahs and make it very, very pulverized, very, you know, like a powder almost, but it's got to be super duper pa- pa- uh, pulverized on, on Yom Kippur. So, Bechol Yom Haisa Daka Vayom, but on Yom Kippurim Daka Mina Daka. Tonara Bono, we learned in Ebraisa. It says in the Torah with regard to the Torahs of Yom Kippurim. In Parshas Achrimos, it says, "V'lakach b'lo amachta gachale ech me'al mizbech l'zei Hashem b'locha ofnav k'tora samim daka behevi mi beis haparochas." So the Gemara, the Brayse asks the following question: Ma Talmud Lomar? Why did the Torah have to go out of its way to say daka to describe the Torahs of Yom Kippurim? After all, the Torahs the whole year round was daka. So why would the there wouldn't be any havamina? Otherwise, in the case of the Torahs, so in Sefer Shmos, if we turn to Perak Lamed, it says there with regard to the daily Torahs, it says, gotta be crushed and made into a very fine powder, if you will. So why did the Torah have to go over this a second time with regard to the Torahs of Yom HaKippurim? It tells it has to be Daka. Uh, we'd have no Havamid that it should not require Daka. It requires Daka the whole year. Ella, Lahavi comes to teach us with regard to the Torahs of Yom HaKippurim, Daka mina Daka, that it should be extra, extra Daka. Therefore, an Erev Yom Kippurim, they would take three monim, those extra three monim that we discussed yesterday of Ktores, and from the Kohen Gadol, uh, who did a Chafina, Molol Chafna on Yom Kippurim, they would take this uh, volume of three monim and they would put it through a second process in a Machpeshes, in a grinder, to do a Shrika Yafa Yafa, so it should be Daka Minadaka. Now, we don't find exactly the shear of dakus that's required on a daily basis or document and daka that's required on Yom Kippurim. This is all very vague. And perhaps there is no shear in the Torah itself, only a din in the Maisa Shechika, that we need an extra Maisa Shechika with regard to the Torah of Yom Kippurim, putting it as it were a second time through the Machteshes, and not relying on the Machteshes that they did the rest of the year. Now, the Sfasemis asks the following question, why didn't the Gemara uh, explicate that the Torah repeated the word Dak and Yom HaKippur to teach us that it's Ma'akev? Usually we have a, re- a principle that when the Torah repeats itself in Kodshim, it teaches us that it's Ma'akev, it's absolutely critical. And perhaps since it says Vishakhakta Mimeno, and that means that it has to be Daka, and through the Shrika becomes Daka, when it says again Daka, it means Liakev. And it could be that we're learning two things from the repetition of the word Daka. Number one, that you need another Maisa of Shrika. Number two, that it is Likuva. The Mishnah teaches us so that the Kohanim don't go up the middle of the Kevesh, but rather towards the right side, towards the Mizrach side. And the Gemara explains why. The Omar Mar, Kol Pina Shatapone Lo Yehei El Derch Yimin, La Mizbeach. In other words, when you turn, you go towards the right. Now, this would explain that. Since the Kevesh was on the south side of the Mizbeach, when he goes up the ramp, he's facing the north. 
And therefore, by definition, the Mizrach is towards his right. When he gets to the top of the Mizbeach, he's going to have to turn towards his right in order to reach that corner, which is the Mokavah Marocha, where the fire is brought. So therefore, the Kohenim would go up on the Mizrach of the Kevesh, so they would not have to go around the Mizbeach in any way, because if you're going to bring them up to the Rosh HaMizbeach and they turn right, then they're right there at the Mokom HaMarocha. If they would go up the Kevesh, let's say in the middle or on the western side, then when they got up to the top of the Kevesh, they would have to turn to the right and they'll have to go through the entire width, the Rochav of the Mizbeach Keneged Kevesh, and that's not covered HaMizbeach. Mishnah says Vayom, but in contrast, on Yom HaKippur, Ma'ola, the Kohen God, goes to the he goes up the Kevich in the middle of the Kevich, for Yorib Emtza, he goes down. My time up. Why is it that the Kohen God does not go up the Mizrach side, the right side of the Kevich, as all Kohen do the whole year round? Mishum Kvodo, the Kohen God. We want to go out of our way to make some sort of a, uh, almost a public demonstration of the glory of the Kohen God to give him a certain chashivus. And he's like a Ben Bias. And he goes up the Kevesh, and he goes this way, and he walks <laughs> Shalol Tzorach, but that's okay because he's a Ben Bias. He does, and he uh, feels at home on the Mizbeh. That's the cover that we give to the Kohen Gadol on Yom HaKippur. The Mishnah says, B'chol Yom Kohen Gadol, M'kadish Yod V'raglam V'nakiyar, but on this day of Yom Kippur, the Kiddush, uh, the Kiddush of Yad of Raglov of the Kohen Gadol is not from the Kiddush, but rather from the Kiton Shel Zahav. It was a receptacle, golden. My timer, why is it that on Yom Kippur, the Kohen Gadol is not Makadish Yad of Raglov from the Kiyar, but rather from the Kiton Shel Zahav, Mishum Kvodo Shel Kohen Gadol, again, this is a Kiyum of demonstrating the cover that we have for the Kohen Gadol, that we have a special plea that's designated, earmarked, made of gold for the Kiddush, Yod of Raglov of the Kohen Gadol. It's not something that we present to all the other Kohen. The Mishnah continues, Yom Hayusham Arba Marachos. And according to Rabbi Meir, there were four different fires on the Rosh HaMizbeach during the entire year. And on Yom HaKippur, they added a fifth. This is Rabbi Meir's opinion. And now we have a price that goes through the various opinions about how many fires there were on the Rosh HaMizbeah. Ton Rabbanon, Bechol Yom, and we're talking now, keep in mind, about the Mizbeah HaChitzon, otherwise known as the Mizbeah HaOla, Hoyu Shtayim Marochos. And we're starting with the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda. He's the first Shita quoted here in the price, so that there were two Marochos of of Eitzim that would burn and create a fire on the top of the Mizbeach. There were three Marochos. What were the three Marochos? Achas. One is the Marocha Gedola. That's where they were makriv all the Karbonos. Achas Marocha Shnia. And that's where they burnt the wood to create the Cholim Shel Ketores for the Ketores that was burnt in the Hechal on the Mizbeach HaPnimi twice a day, Shachas V'yarvis. And then V'yachas, and on Yom HaKippurim, says Rabbi Yudu, they added Motsif and Bobayom, a third Marocha, and that's where they generated the Gecholim for the purpose of the coin when he went, the coin God, when he went in Luftai V'lifdim, to be mocked to the Ketores, he took the Gecholim from that third, from that third Eish. That third Marocha. Divrei Rabbi Yehud. So Rabbi Yehuda has two the whole year round. And Rabbi Yossi jacks it up over the Chayom Sholos. There was a third Marach, Vayom Arban. On Yom Kippur, they added the fourth for the sake of the Gecholim, for the Ketores, Lifnai V'Lifnin. What were the four Marachas according to Rabbi Yossi on the daily day? Number one, Achas HaMarach Gedol, Achas Marach HaShnishol Ketores. And that is identical to what we saw in Rabbi Yehuda. V'yachas, but there was a third marocha, shel kiyum ha'esh, 
that means they had an extra fire available that if in event the fire from of the of the Marochagdola was not burning properly, cold sarka, as they say. It wasn't a they saw that the fire was was dwindling, it was it was going down. So they would take Gacholim from this third Marocha, says Rabbi Yossi, which was dedicated simply for Kiyuma Eish. And they would be able to take those Gacholim from that third Marocha and add it to the Marocha Gedola if the need arose. The Achas, Shemosif and Bobayom, and that's the fourth, the additional Marocha for Yom Kippurim, the Ktores, taking from the Gacholim for the Ktor Lifnaivutim. Rebbe Omer, now we have a third opinion, quoted in this price, in addition to Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi, Bechol Yom Arba, Vayom Chamesh. Now there's a Girsa issue here about whether it should be Rebbe or Rabbi Meir. He writes here that in our Girsa Tosefta, it says Rebbe Omer, not Rabbi Meir, but the Rashash writes that for sure the proper girsa should be Rabbi Meir because this shita that we're about to learn, Rabbi, is identical with the shita Rabbi Meir, which is quoted in our Mishnah. So Bechalyom Arba, we needed four marachos on a daily basis the whole year. Rabbi Yom, and on Yom Kippur, we added a fifth chamesh, achas. What are the four on a daily basis? Maroch Gdola. So until now, this is identical with the previous sheet the quoted of Rabbi Yosi. But now we need a fourth Marach on the Mizbech, and that's Levorim Updarim. And according to this sheet, you have certain limbs of the animal and chalet of the Karbonos that were brought yesterday, Shalonis Aklu Miba'erev, that during the course of of burning on the Mitzbeach, the during the Lila, during the Meshach Lila, they were not totally consumed. And Hayu Barosh HaMizbeach, that what happens is that they had to keep it on the Rosh HaMizbeach, but it wasn't on the Marocha. And this is based on a Gemara in Mesech Tzvachim on Pei Zion, and the reason why they kept the Avarim Uptarim, the Chalovim, on top of the Mizbech is Kadei Shal Yipasul Belina, because Ain Lina Barach HaMizbech. Another possibility is that these were actually limbs that were on the Marach during the course of the night, but uh, they didn't get to the point in which they were totally burnt. Lotspikul is Akel, Vilisarev, Legamre. And you might mention that in the Gemara on Daf Chaf earlier, we learned that Evarim Shepaku Me'al Gabi Mitzvech Achim Ketzoslai Machzirin Osan, that if the Evarim after midnight do not fall off the Mitzvech, we don't put it back on, that's only in Paku, but as long as low Paku, they can stay on the Mitzvech, and then if they fall off the Eish, we can put it back on the Eish. They didn't fall off the Mitzvech, low Paku. Fine. Now, the Achas Shemosif and Bobayom, in addition to these four Marochos during the course of the year, there was a fifth added for Yom Kippur. The Kuli Alamias Tarati Islu. Everybody agrees in this price, it's unanimous that you need at least a minimum of two Marochos, Minolan. What's the source that we need two different pyres or fires on the Mizbech Omakra? And here we're going to open up to Vayikra, Perik Vav, Pasukbev, Ki Ha'ola, Al Mokda, Al Mizbeach, Kol Alayla. So the word Mokda is indicative, of course, of a pyre. Mokda zu Marocha Gdola. And that's the Marocha on which they burnt all the Karbanos. And then let's look at the Sefer of this same Pasuk. It says, Va'esh ha-mizbeach tukad bo. And again, we have the word tukad. So we have mokta and tukad. 
Zoma Rochashni Shal Ketores. And this is the second pyre that we require for the Ketores. Now, why do you think the Torah requires two marachos, a separate marachos for the Ketores? And the explanations here are all pretty much the same. That with regard to the marachos gedola, you know, you put all the carbonos there, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of meats and fats and so forth. And when we get to the Ketores, we really want to get to gecholim that are not. Uh, that are not mixed, if you will, with, you know, the leftover, the avarim of the carbonos. We want something that's a little bit more clean and pure, so to speak, for the Torahs. The Gemara asks Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi adds a third marach on a daily basis. Where did he derive the conclusion? And a pasuk that teaches you that you need a third marach of the kima eish. Now again, We've been learning until now, Pasuk Beis in Perik Vav. Now we're going to fast forward to Pasuk Hey, just three Pasukim later. It says, etc. And the Gemara asks, Rabbi, oh, so fine. So now there's another Eshan Mizbeach Tukad. This is the third Tukad. Rabbi Yehuda, he holds that there were, it's sufficient to have two marachos during the course of the year. So why did the Torah have to add this pasuk, pasuk hey, for eish al mizbech tukad bo? And the Gemara answers, hahu latzosas alis alisa hu diosa. So we're going to talk now for a moment about this concept called hatzosas alisa, which in Hebrew is called Hatzotas hakismin hadakin, right? These are small, uh, small twigs, and in the English, these are called splinters. That's the translation they offer in the English, and just one second, we'll see if he adds anything here in the English translation in the footnote. He says that they would kindle the splinters of wood in order to start the, the H on the Mizbeach, to start the fire on the large pyre every morning. And this was done by kindling small splinters or twigs and inserting them between the larger boards. And the small bits of burning wood would set the larger pieces ablaze. And this is how they started the fire on the Marocha Gidol. And Rabbi Yehuda derives this from the extra Tukad bow, as we said in Pasuk He. So, in other words, we had a Havim that maybe he could, light, he could light up these splinters or these small twigs while he's down on the Ritzpah of the, of, of the Azara, and then it'll bring them up once they're burning. How do you know you have to burn them and light them on the top of the Mizbeh? We'll soon see that we require a coin, and he's got to be wearing a big day kahuna. Talmud Lom Reishal Mizbeh Tukad Bo means that the lighting of these twigs should be dafka on top of the Mizbeh. On Rabbi Yossi, Minayin Sha Ose Merocha Lekim Eish Talmud Lom Reishal Mizbeh Tukad Bo. And now, from the language of Rabbi Yossi, as quoted in this price, it would seem that he also uh, consents and concedes to this extra din of Rabbi Yehuda that you need hatsosas hakismin to light up these small twigs. And that has to take place on the Rosh Hashanah. Because if he would have disagreed or rejected Rabbi Yossi, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yehuda, then it should have said low-key Ella. But rather it says, He doesn't come to disagree with this other din. And therefore the Gemara asks, Since he's using that very fame, same posture of Yehuda, of to derive the extra marocha for Kiyama Eish, from whence does he derive that Allah of Rabbi Yehuda, which Rabbi Yossi presumably concedes to, namely that we need the Hatzat Salisa. 
Nafkalei mehechad the Nafkalei le Rabbi Shimon. The Sanya we learned in a Brisa, Rabbi Shimon has a different source, and the Machlokas now recorded in this Brisa revolves around a pasuk, and this pasuk is at the beginning of Sefer Vayikra, and it's pasuk Zion. It says, "V'nasnu b'nei Arona Kohen Eich al Mizbeach v'archu Eitim al Mizbeach al Eish." According to one opinion, Limed al Hatzatzas al Lisa Shalote El Bekoin Kosher Beklishares Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. Now, according to Rabbi Yehuda, we already have a source, as we saw in Perik Vav of Sefer Vayikra for the Hatzatzas al Lisa al Gabi Mizbeach. But we have an additional source in the first Perik of Vayikra to teach me that this process of Lighting these kismin dakim, these small splinters, that has to be implemented. That has to be achieved by a kohen kosher who is wearing his big day kahuna. Whether it be, let's say, in the case of a kohen hedger, he's wearing four begadim. If he's a kohen gadol, he's wearing eight begadim. This is all Rabbi Yehuda. Amalo Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says to Rabbi Yehuda, no, no, no. It cannot be that this possible is coming to teach me Kohen Kosher and Klisharis. Why? Because we've already derived from the Pasuk of Aish Al Hamizbeach Tukad Bo in Perk Vav that there is a requirement for Atzasas Halisa and it's got to be Barach Hamizbeach. He said, Tal al Daitcha Shazar Karev Lagab Hamizbeach. The Torah prohibits a Zar from being on the Mizbeach. The Pasuk says, and we'll read it in Mirz Hashem in the Torah very soon, in Bamidbar Yudches. Ach es el klei hakodesh vel mizbech lo yikruvu. So why would I need the Torah to teach me with another pasuk that atzos hakismen, which has to be done al rosh hamizbech, cannot be done by a czar. It has to be implemented by a kohen. Therefore, Ella says, Rab Shimon, this pasuk v'nostu b'nei aron hakohen eich al mizbech, at the beginning of Sefer Vayikra, is Limed al Alisa. This is the source for the requirement that burning, lighting up these splinters, Shalotayel Brosha, has to be taking place by Rosho Shel Mizbeach. And therefore, when it says Bnei Aaron Akohen, is coming to teach me that which we derived, and this was a Gemara back on Chafal from the base, that even though there's an Aish that comes down from Shemayim, we have a Mitzvah Lahavi Aish Me Hejot. We have to light our own fire on the Mizbeach. The Indian, as far as Nesinas Eish, Zu, the Apostle tells me it has to be done by a Kohen. It's not enough, let's say the Zar would light the fire for the Mizbeach while he's standing on the floor of the Azara, and then he'll throw it up somehow onto the Mizbeach. But in any event, it comes out to the Quinter of Shimon, this Apostle, Va Eish ala Mizbeach, Tukad Bo in Perik Vav, is coming to teach me that we need a marocha shlichis for the kiyam ha h, and that ref that reflects the same identical sheet as Rabbi Yosef. So the Gemara now asks Rabbi Yehuda, what is Rabbi Yehuda's answer to the objection of Rabbi Shimon? Now, since the pasuk veishal mizbeach tukad bo, according to Rabbi Yehuda, teaches us at sasas ha ha lisa, and that has to be done for Rosh HaMizbeach, Eish Al HaMizbeach Tukad Bo. So why do I need an extra post of an Oslo B'nei Aaron HaKohen Eish Al HaMizbeach to teach me that you need a Kohen? And the Gemara answers, and this we can anticipate on our own, Imi Hosam HaVamino, if we did not have anything except for the post of Eish Al HaMizbeach Tukad Bo, I would have entertained the idea that that Tosa Lisa has to be done for Rosh HaMizbeach, but nevertheless it's Sheri Bizarre. Why? To Kai Aar, let the Zar light these splinters and these twigs while he's standing on the ground next to the Mizbeah. The Ovid Bimapucha. Now, what does Mapucha mean? In the Hebrew, he translates it as Mapuach Aroch. And in the English, he translated it as using a bellows, a bellows. Right? You remember the bellows, right? To fan the flames. So that he could be standing, the Tsar, on the ground at a certain distance from the altar. And he uses these bellows to project the 
the the ace onto the mizbeach. Now, even though the pasuk of ace al mizbeach tukadvo seems to indicate that this avodah would be performed on top of the mizbeach, but nevertheless, one could assume, at least we could. A th- raise such a habmita that a zar would stand at a distance and could perform this this avoda. Therefore, kamashvul, and that's why I need the pasuk at the beginning of Vayikra v'nasnu b'nei Aaron akoyin aish alam is beach that it's not kshira el aliyday koyin. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, this pasuk is going to teach us that hatzasas alisa. And the Nesina Sa'esh of Hedjot is completely invalid. You need a Kohen and Big Day Kuhn. The Gemara now clarifies to Rabbi Meir, who holds that every day of the year there were four Marochos, and there was an extra Maroch of Eivorim Updarim Shalonis Aklu Miberev Minola. What's the source for this fourth Marocha for those limbs of the yesterday's Karbonos that weren't consumed on the age, on the Mizbeach? Nafkale. He's going to derive it me ve h. There's an extra vav in the pasuk ve ve h hamizbeach tukad bo. H hamizbeach tukad bo, and it says ve h hamizbeach. So this vav is te- teaching us that there's an extra marocha. The, the simple part in the pasuk without the vav is that we need a second marocha, which is for the chorus. The vav is redundant. It's coming to teach us a third marocha, which is for the purpose of burning the evarim v'chalavim of yesterday that were not totally consumed for Abbanon. The chachamim, which means either Rabbi Yud or Rabbi Yossi, they reject Rabbi Meir. They don't set up a separate marocha for the evarim v'chalavim of, es- of Esmol of yesterday. So what do they do with the extra vav? Vav lo darshi. The extra vav fits into the chukot shal mikra and they don't have a vav. I mean, Tosus points out in Masech the Sanhedrin that it doesn't mean that Rabbi Yosef and Rabbi Yehuda never darshan the extra vav. In fact, in the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Adaf Yudalid, Rabbi Yehuda darshans from the extra vav. But what it means is that ain't lidrosh drasha zu. This particular drasha, with regard to deriving as Rabbi Meir does an extra maroch of H from the word vav, that they reject. And the Chasli David on the Tosef explains that Rabbi Meir darshins from this Vav as if it said H twice, H and another H. And therefore he derives two Marochos, whereas Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda, they reject this Russia. It says H once and not twice. We don't derive from here an extra Marocha. Marna wants to clarify. Lirabonon, the Chacham will hold that they didn't create a separate Marocha to burn the Evarim and the Chalov of yesterday. So, where in fact do you burn today, yesterday's Evarim and Pedorim that weren't consumed? And the answer is, they put it back, these Evarim and the Chalov of yesterday, onto the Marocha Gedol together with all the Karbonos. And they bring it and burn it together with all the carbonates of that day. And the Gemara now is going to quote a Brisa, the Sanya, Minayin on this Aklu Miba Erev. How do we know that those Avarim Upidarim that were not totally consumed on the fire yesterday will be organized on the Mizbeach, on the Marocha Gedola? together with all the korbanos for today.